Last week, I wanted to build a cool, fun science experiment on my stream. Twitch.tv slash OracleFishLive, by the way. And I wanted to make a new digital set or green screen backdrop for it titled Crafting with Chris. However, starting out, I was already exhausted, overextended, and had no clear conceptual idea of what I actually wanted to make. So needless to say, I did not finish in time for the Friday stream. Instead, it took three times longer than originally anticipated, or two extra nights working until 3 a.m. This is what it ended up looking like, which honestly, I'm really happy with. But boy oh boy, was it a bumpy ride getting here. All said and done, it was about 22 hours of work. Now, I really like making these narrated time-lapse how it's made videos because I learn a lot in the process of making these digital sets, and I can pass the lessons on to you in a very small fraction of the time. You can learn from my workflow, and you can learn from my mistakes. All of that being said, let's hop into this beautiful disaster piece of a time sink. My name is Chris Folia. I'll be your stream scholar. Welcome to stream school. So the first thing I do when I make any of these digital sets is make sure the digital camera matches the real world camera in position, focal length, and uh, sensor size. Then I add a picture of myself so I can build the set around myself. Then I, here I'm just starting to lay everything out, uh, added some lights that match my real world lights. And based on the reference images that I found, I was looking for workshops and craft rooms. And I liked these drawers a lot that were in this workshop with the cool and digital handles. I thought that was a neat detail. So I decided to mimic that and I moved that around, got it all set up, decided I didn't want to take up the entire backdrop, so I shortened it. Then I added one of these hole boards to the walls. I don't actually know what that's called, but you can hang stuff from it. And I didn't know the real measurements for that either, which was kind of a problem, so I just kind of winged it. Uh, but overall, I think it matched pretty well. I also added the start of a countertop there and just started laying out the rest of the scene, added some pipes and other details that I saw in workshops and some beams going across the top just for some extra ceiling detail. Here, I wanted to make a logo like my Cooking with Chris logo, but use a saw instead. And modeling a saw wasn't too difficult. It was just basic box modeling. I was looking at a lot of reference on Google for that, even though it's not showing in Blender right there. And the, the blades weren't too bad to model either. Uh, Google fonts for the font. I was just looking for something blocky to match. I uh, got the lighting set up, moved the saw into place, and added the crafting text. I tried a couple different fonts before I landed on one that I liked. And then I placed this in the upper left-hand corner. One of the biggest problems with the Cooking with Chris logo is that I happen to be standing directly in front of it a lot of the time. Um, so I wanted this to be in the left corner so it would be more visible most of the time. Uh, then I started working on the scene some more, adding various details, just tweaking things, laying things out. I worked on the actual craft bench there, the bottom of it. I wanted like a shelf to put tables and stuff. And here I noticed that these um, boards with holes in them have a lot of stuff hanging from them in all the pictures that I saw. So here I wanted to add some screwdrivers just because that's a good thing that can fill up a lot of space and adds a decent amount of detail. Although I didn't realize with the size of my set how tiny screwdrivers were. And at this point, I didn't really know what direction I wanted to go or where to add detail. So I just kind of stored, sort of started vomiting detail onto this whole board thing. Uh, so I added T-squares, then I started adding more details to the scene, like light switches, started moving things around, tweaking, just constantly moving back and forth, trying to figure out where things go, what things should look like. And uh, notice I added some pegs to hang all of this stuff from. Added more screwdrivers, because I wasn't sure what other details to add. I tweaked the logo to make the lights look better with it. Then just kept figuring out more and more things to vomit detail into the scene. I was just like, this looks so blank, this looks so bare, what can I add? Uh, I also noticed the normal map was inverted on the bricks, so I had to fix that. Uh, another thing I'd found to put on the board was this hanging shelf to put screws and stuff in. I thought that looked pretty cool. So this is more just basic box modeling. Shoved that into place, moved everything around to try to get the composition better. But at this point, it's already pretty late at night and I've only pretty much added detail to this board thing. But here I started trying to bring the workshop and the craft rooms together. So I added colored walls and I added some more colorful things to the set. 
uh, just like the colored tape on the whole board there. And I added some yarn as well, which was not as difficult to model as you would think. I just added some circles around a sphere and gave it like a felt texture. Some shelves to the right, just for extra detail. Move everything around, try to make the composition look nice. Just trying to figure out what detail to add, what detail to add, what detail to add. I added uh, some markers to the shelves. I spent way too long uh, laying those markers out of of course, I added my signature detail or logo to the scene, and then um, I didn't like the saw logo, so I decided to make a new Crafting with Chris logo that's just text on a shelf. And I like how this looked better, but I still am not really a fan of it. It's not very fun or playful. I added the curved with Chris from it with some metal hooks after I got it all modeled out and just tried to make it look as crafted as possible, but I'm still just not happy with how that looked. Uh, continued adding detail to the scene. I added some books, which don't really fit the crafting aesthetic, but do just add detail to the background. That's the life and times of Chris Folia. <laughs> Here, I wanted to texture things to make them look more believable, more realistic. So I decided to texture the wooden table and also texture the whole board as well. I still don't know what to call that. But this one took a while to unwrap, and then it took even longer to find a wood texture that I was happy with for it. Uh, I had to decide between horizontal vertical grain, what kind of wood to use, what color to use, so it matched the blue walls nicely. So this is where we ended up, and I don't necessarily think it looks bad. It just doesn't have a clear direction between the craft room and the workshop. Uh, it's a little bit busy and distracting from the foreground, and it also doesn't really match the lab coat or lab goggles that I wanted to use for the specific segment that I wanted this for. So on to take two. For take two, I decided I wanted a happier reference image of myself. So I took that into After Effects and back into Blender with like a smiling thumbs up. Then I spent some time looking at a bunch of different lab reference since I hadn't done any pre-work for this digital set. And I found that most labs and laboratories and classrooms have cabinets. So I decided to find a really good reference image of lab cabinets and decided to build the background around those initially. And I wanted this to be a more spacious background than the typical digital sets that I've done. So I'd put these pretty far back so you could see the floor and the ceiling just to make it feel big. Uh, but I spent a lot of time detailing up these cabinets using my kitchen cabinets and real world measurements since I obviously don't have a lab in my apartment. And I, I, I think these turned out pretty cool. Uh, just. They, they look like cabinets, not much to say there. At this point, I wanted a table between the cabinets and myself where I could put like a mad scientist chemistry set with flasks and stuff. And then here, I also wanted some cabinets on the walls. Very quickly realized that I didn't want those to take up the entire back wall, but I did want uh, some shelves in those. I did want them to be hollow so I could make glass doors and put details inside of the cabinets. You know, I shortened those down and then I moved those over to the right of the scene and made them take up even less space just so I could use the wall real estate for other various details. And here I decided to start modeling the chemistry set with a conical flask and then I wanted some cool glowing liquid to cast light on the scene, like maybe a chemical reaction is happening, but I completely ditched that idea altogether later. Then here I just wanted to add various different shapes and sizes of flasks, so conical, spherical, and I also wanted them to be at different elevations. Of course I have to add in the stereotypical curled tubing here between the two flasks. Uh, and I just wanted lots of cool detail with this chemistry set right there. And it also adds some interesting color to the scene. And here I knew that I wanted a periodic table of elements in the backdrop just for that extra nerd factor. So I got that off of Wikipedia where a lot of images are actually Creative Commons. I um, modified the colors of that and added some science is fun text to it and also some various wrinkles just because perfectly flat stuff feels very CG. Here I used the array modifier to make a cool DNA model in the backdrop. I was just sort of thinking what would look cool in this scientific lab. And uh, I just kept on with that mentality. I jumped back and forth between a lot of different aspects of the scene. So like here I'm working on the tile flooring. It's just sort of what can I work on next? What can I work on next? What can I work on next? Maybe I'll start one thing, jump to the next thing while I sort of think of how to finish the other thing. But I did go back to the DNA, decided I wanted it to cast light on the walls because I thought that looked pretty cool. Uh, Blender actually crashed there and I lost progress. So I had to redo the colors on those. 
And then here I took a ceiling from my life advice hotline and then hung some molecule models from that ceiling. So I think this was water. And then I don't remember what the, what the green one is, but I just looked for molecule models on Google and I added some ceiling lights there just to add extra additional detail to the scene. And the entire time I'm working on this, I'm just thinking, how can I add more detail? which is not a great mindset to have. But here I'm working on a microscope for the scene because I noticed there are typically microscopes in laboratories. And there's a lot going on with the model of a microscope. I didn't add all of the tiny details like screws and stuff because this was most likely gonna be blurred out in the background somewhere. But I did model it in its own collection so that I could easily duplicate it throughout the scene. Um, if it, just so I could have tons of microscopes maybe on the cabinets and on various shelves and things. And again, at this point, I'm just thinking, how can I make this lab more detailed? So I added a sink here, and because those are typical in labs and classrooms, so you can wash your hands or wash out your eyes if you get like acid in them. And I added the typical like hook shaped sink that you might picture in like a, like a 60s classroom or something, I don't know. Uh, here I took an office chair I already had and repurposed that asset into a stool for the lab so I could scatter those across the lab. Uh, no reason to completely model it from scratch if I already have something that's usable. No reason to reinvent the wheel. I wanted some various vials and vial stands scattered throughout the lab so I added that. But overall I was just like thinking this is a lab, what lab details can I add to make this a more realistic lab. I just kept vomiting more and more detail into this scene and tweaking and moving things around without really thinking about it because it was really really late at night. I was starting to hit a point of diminishing returns where I was just like, how can I add detail? Then I was like, this isn't fun. This looks like a boring lab. How can I make it fun? Oh, I know. I'll add a slime pattern to the trim at the top and the backdrop. That'll make it look fun. Then we can add some science, some fun science text. And the problem here wasn't with the lab that I created. The problem was conceptually. I have a Twitch stream that replicates like a, t like a fun talk show kind of vibe and talk show stage. And going to a realistic lab, as much detail and colors and things and models as I can add to the background, it still feels like a lab, which very unfortunately people associate that with lack of fun, I guess. So I just kept vomiting detail and vomiting detail and trying to make it more colorful and fun and more detailed and just make it a lab. And it just, it was so late at night and it just was not working. So this is basically where we ended up. I did continue to tweak it more. I took it in After Effects to see what it would look like if I applied some color grading and stuff. But I just kept tweaking and tweaking and moving things and moving things and trying to make the composition better, trying to make the lighting and colors better. And the entire thing, again, just conceptually wasn't working. I did take the molecules and make those monotone to fit the blue theme, but I think that just made it feel more sterile and boring overall. So at the end of the day, I ended up with this at about 3 a.m. and I don't necessarily think it's bad in terms of execution. I think it's bad conceptually because you can take a scientific lab and vomit as much color and decorations into it as you want, but at the end of the day, it still feels like a lab or a classroom. And none of this even crossed my mind until I saw the finished product of this at the end of that tunnel. Uh, so discovering this, I started looking into science exhibits and science children's museums to get something that's more fun and whimsical. And I took that idea into take number three. So I decided I did not want to start completely from scratch. So I just hid the previous lab set and decided I could repurpose a lot of those assets, but on like a cool fun talk show stage. Then I decided to start this time with a fun Science with Chris logo, similar to the Cooking with Chris logo from the cooking set. And I drew a lot of inspiration here from the Jimmy Neutron logo with the cool atom bands around like uh, fun science text. And not a whole lot to say here in terms of logo development or thought process. I just kept tweaking and playing around with things and moving things until it looked cool and it looked like something that could actually be physically constructed on a set. So I messed a lot with the placement of these elements. Of course, I added the curved with Chris text. And overall, I think this turned out really cool. I'm actually really happy with this logo. And here I decided to add like a backdrop to the logo where it could sort of cast 
shadows and have some depth. And I decided to put this in behind me and I started messing with the colors of this logo. And I could not for the life of me find colors that worked on the backdrop of this logo that I liked on the backdrop or the bands. So I decided to just ditch the backdrop altogether and I went with a cool tritone black, white, and blue logo with the fun science text. And I felt like that also just matched the color scheme of my show really well. Here, I tried to make like a cool curved table behind me with a cube, but it just was not working. So I made it using a cylinder or a part of a cylinder instead. And I was looking for like a fun, cool children's science exhibit kind of table or talk show set kind of table that looks like a set piece rather than a lab desk. And I just started shoving assets in here as well, like the DNA model and tweaking and adjusting and positioning things. Uh, and then I started repurposing assets like the flasks here. I put those on the table and started moving all of that around, messing with colors. I used spotlights to light this scene because I wanted like a really distinct vignette around the edges, especially towards the right where the chat is. But I kept repurposing and positioning the various flasks. And I realized these weren't getting like the glow of colors that I really wanted in the scene. I just could not get like the light to behave how I wanted with these flasks to bounce the different liquid colors on the scene. So I actually opened a new scene and tested around with light bouncing and could not get the colors to bounce very much. So I just sort of resigned on that front. And I ended up just putting in a white backdrop on these flasks to make the vibrant colors of the liquids inside of them really pop and stand out. Got rid of the emission on the DNA strand back there, just made them like a solid plastic colors for the DNA colors. And then here I wanted like a cool two-tone backdrop with like a liquid that could be like a sciency liquid in the backdrop and decided the three waves were too much. So I made it just one big swooping wave in the backdrop that went opposite to the table because I felt like that felt really cool compositionally. And uh, did a lot of, lot of just thinking about what could what, what could be added here and what needed to be moved around. And I decided that the, the arc table wasn't super happy with it. So I started experimenting with different table shapes. I went between a rectangular table, a circular table, and then the arc table that I had, all of them with white backdrops. And I left all of them up available for me to easily mess with so I could easily swap between the three. Um, here, I just started adding details to the right-hand side of the scene. I just wanted some cool science-y stuff in the backdrop that I already had. So I took the microscope I modeled the previous night, made it gigantic, and uh, put that in the, in the background so it's like a fun science model. Also, experimented briefly with making giant flasks in the background. I put another set piece over there on the very, very far right and started making these flasks a little bit bigger again back and forth on a lot of aspects of the scene but I wanted the flasks to really pop and be really vibrant which is why I made those bigger here I modeled a molecule to put on the new stand a much more complicated molecule I looked up all sorts of different molecules that would be funny if anybody recognized it like uh, like LSD um, corn syrup stuff like that but I ended up using a blood molecule because it looked really cool added in my typical Shout out to Punch Bomb in the scene with the bombs on the table. And here I was just like looking at things and tweaking and moving things around. And I decided to put the logo in the background so it'd feel more grounded with shadows against the wall. And then here I wanted bubbles on the liquid in the backdrop. And for that, I had to use a cylinder and actually Boolean out a piece of the curved wall. I couldn't just use flat bubbles because the wall is curved. Um, and I duplicated those across to make it feel sort of like a sciencey concoction, which I think ended up looking really cool. Uh, and here I added some detail to the flasks because th they looked too bare without like measurements on them because typical science flasks do have measurements. I didn't, I didn't need to add numbers to it because they are blurred out in the background, but you could tell if they were just completely bare. And uh, here I've decided I wanted to see what the scene looked like without me standing there since I would be ducking behind my desk and whatnot at some points. So I decided to extend the entire table past the center of the frame just to take up more space. So if I ducked down or went off frame or something, it would look fine. Then as a meme, I added my mascot passed out drunk in the, in the background, which nobody will ever see this except for the very tip of the tail 
and the fins right there, but it's uh, still nice to know that it's there. I think it's pretty funny. And here I decided the DNA model was too busy. So I just ditched it all together after asking for feedback from friends and just made the logo bigger. And I decided to completely redo the lighting from scratch. I just wasn't happy with it. So I started with just one spotlight, see what I could come up with for that. Um, and I just pointed at the scene, just one big key light for the entire scene. And I realized pretty quickly, I couldn't get that looking the way I wanted, lighting both the foreground and the background together. So after messing with this a lot, I decided to light the background separately from the foreground. So I got those really nice soft shadows on the logo. Then I was also able to light the foreground desk and the two side exhibits uh, all completely separately. And I'm so, so much happier with how this lighting came out compared to the lighting the, the first attempt at the lighting. And this is pretty much where we ended up. After this was recorded, I did replace the arced table with the rectangular table, purely so that it would match up with the real world footage with my real life rectangular standing table. But overall, I am so, so much happier with this set. It feels so much more whimsical, fun, and playful like a colorful talk show set than like a boring laboratory or workshop. So what are the takeaways here? Well, for one, don't pull all-nighters. This lesson is apparently completely beyond my grasp, especially since I'm recording this video in the middle of the night. So this is more of a do as I say and not as I do situation. If you're working on something for long periods of time, especially in the middle of the night when you're exhausted, you're gonna start to hit a point of diminishing returns where you just start to make things look worse rather than better. This is because you're scrambling to make literally any progress at all, but then you'll wake up in the next morning and realize it's an absolute dumpster fire. Secondly, I am a very strong believer in success through iteration. I really wasn't happy with the first two attempts at this set at all, but failures are not failures if you learn from them and they lead you where you want to go. Also, if something's not working, don't be afraid to scrap it and try a different direction. Fourth, and finally, try to go into your project with a really clear idea of what it is you're going for. Usually, I start these things with a pretty good understanding of what it is I want to make, and then obviously that evolves as I work on it, but this time I went in completely blind with a couple pretty Google images, and I really paid the price for not doing the prep work. All of that being said, if you have any questions or just want to see me use this stuff on stream, I'm live every Tuesday, Friday, and Saturday at twitch.tv slash oraclefishlive. And if you found this video interesting or insightful, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button below the video and ring the bell for new content every single week. Until next time, my name is Chris Folia. I'm your stream scholar, and class is out.